Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In 1972, CBS News warned us about the coming ice age. British professor Hubert Lamb says that a new ice age is creeping over the northern hemisphere. Even then, it won't be as bad as the last ice age 60,000 years ago. Then New York, Cincinnati, St. Louis were under 5,000 feet of ice. Presumably, no traffic moved and school was let out for the day. And that's the way it is, Monday, September 11th, 1972. In 1978, Stephen Schneider of the National Center for Atmospheric Research again warned us about the coming ice age. Climate experts believe the next ice age is on its way. According to recent evidence, it could come sooner than anyone had expected. At weather stations in the far north, temperatures have been dropping for 30 years. Sea coasts long free of summer ice are now blocked year round. According to some climatologists, within a lifetime, we might be living in the next ice age. If an ice age is coming, what can we do to stop it? Nuclear energy might be used to loosen polar ice caps. Sea ice could be melted by covering it with black soot to increase the absorption of sunlight. Dr. Steven Schneider is a climatologist from the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Can we do these things? Yes. But will they make things better? I'm not sure. We can't predict with any certainty what's happening to our own climatic future. How can we come along and intervene then in that ignorance? You could melt the ice caps. What would that do to the coastal cities? The cure could be worse than disease. Would that be better or worse than the risk of an ice age? And then four years later in 1982, CBS News said that scientists had long been warning us about global warming. Concern about rising temperatures on planet Earth heated up a hearing here in Washington today. For years, scientists have theorized about the dangers of the so-called greenhouse effect the warming of the Earth's atmosphere due to the burning of coal and oil. And in recent months, as David Culhane reports, research has uncovered facts to support that theory. Many scientists claim that the temperature of the Earth's atmosphere has been rising over the past 100 years, that the great sheets of pack ice in Antarctica are melting at a much more rapid rate than previously. And finally, that the sea level has been rising with increasing swiftness over the past 40 years. If these scientists are correct, about 25% of Florida would be flooded along with low-lying areas all over the world. Climate changes could produce widespread disruption of agriculture. The American farm belt might be too dry and the wheat and corn crops would have to move to Canada. Scientists blame the odorless, colorless carbon dioxide gas for these potentially dangerous changes around the planet. It is the greenhouse effect. The gas allows sunlight to filter down and warm the earth. But like the glass of a greenhouse, the carbon dioxide tends to trap heat so that it cannot rise into space. The scientists maintain that the coal, oil, and gas we've been burning for a hundred years have produced more and more carbon dioxide and helped overheat the Earth. Now some political leaders endorse the demands for more CO2 monitoring stations, like this one in Hawaii. And they share the anger of the scientists at Reagan administration budget cuts at a time when they feel closer to getting definitive answers. We are not doing the kind of research that we should be doing to determine whether or not these scientists who are so alarmed are correct in their assessment. And what they find out will affect the lives and fortunes of millions of people. The very survival of cities like this one. David Culhane, CBS News, New York. That was some pretty rapid climate change between 1978 and 1982. They said that one-fourth of Florida was going to be underwater, but their map showed a lot more than one-fourth. And I'm fairly certain that Miami is still there. This is what Miami Beach looks like this afternoon. In their 1982 report, CBS News said that carbon dioxide was a colorless, odorless gas. But they showed this picture of filthy air in an obvious effort to mislead their viewers. They said that survival of New York City depended on taking action against carbon dioxide. 
New York City is still there, but the Twin Towers are gone. New York has a lot of problems, but carbon dioxide is not one of them. It's amazing how quickly the press switched from the Ice Age scare to carbon dioxide being a long-term problem which scientists had been warning us about for years. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for more than 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.